Good morning, everyone. Happy Reformation Sunday. Good to see you all. All right, we're going to start with announcements first. There are a lot, so I will just, you know, kind of try and do the highlights. Thanks to everyone who showed up yesterday uh, at any time to help with apple butter. It was a really awesome event. Um, so loved it. Thank you so much. Uh, if you need apple butter, I still think we have some. So talk to Dixie. All right, other things going on. After church, head on right downstairs. We have our Reformation uh, potluck to enjoy together. Uh, I don't know if you're smelling the things I'm smelling, but it smells good. So uh, we'll worship and then uh, eat. Tonight there's Bible study uh, for women at 6.30 at Valley Ho Farm. Uh, this week, other highlights. Monday night, there's a safety and security Zoom meeting. Tuesday at 9.30 a.m., there's a Heritage Day Review meeting. On Wednesday, our office volunteers are having a meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then there's a Bible study at 6.30 p.m. as usual. Next weekend is the Wooly Retreat. Read about that announcement in your bulletin if you're interested in those kind of crafts. Uh, it is also All Saints weekend next weekend. Uh, please notice the uh, boards over near the entrance where you came in. Uh, those are for names of folks that um, have died over the years that you would like remembered, and so you can add names to that. If you have the name of someone who is not a member who died in this past year that you would like remembered, please call the church office, and we will um, have that as our names remembered um, as part of worship next week. All right, other things next Sunday to remind you of. It's the first Sunday of the month, so we have confirmation at 4 and youth group at 6. All right, some other quick highlights. Uh, we have a day off coming up on election day, so if you have kiddos that you would love to have some fun activities for, we will hang out with them and have a great time. Please uh, register for that online through our website. That's Tuesday, November 5th. November 10th, um, we are having a congregational meeting in between services. You should have received an email or a mailing about that. Uh, it's updates to the Constitution. Um, so we have to have two meetings. This is the first, and then at our annual meeting, uh, we will uh, vote on that again. So the, I have two more things. It is getting to be the holiday season. So let me just remind you of things to think about. Um, for Thanksgiving, if you would like to help, please notice there, uh, there is information about getting together a basket for things there. Um, Operation Christmas Child Boxes in the Welcome Center. And then it will be before, uh, the deadline will be on us before we know it, Poinsettia Orders and Lutheran World Relief Gifts. Those order forms are under the mailboxes. They will be due on December 1st, so start thinking about those. All right. We're doing good. You're doing great. So... The only other thing, prayer request-wise, that I have to share with you, unfortunately, um, is that our beloved Pastor Ron Reeves died. Um, he was fighting cancer and um, had started some immunotherapy, but unfortunately it did not go well, and he uh, passed away this week. Um, his funeral will be on Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. at Elias Lutheran Church in Emmitsburg, which is where he was from. If you want to go, but you don't want to drive all that way, um, the van will be going. We have room for 14. Uh, you will leave at 1, 110 on Tuesday. If you need a ride to go to that funeral, please talk directly to Pastor Matt. Call him, email him, etc. He's the one to talk to about that. Um, Lucretia is currently living in a nursing facility, but uh, again, we will pray for their whole family and hold them in our um, hearts and prayers as we go through this week. And then, um, of course, this week as well, we had the funeral for Bill Lance, so we will remember them today as well. Any other prayer requests or things we need to share on that? Okay, next exciting part of worship. So this is, first we're going to do, ooh, I need, who do I got, who do I got? Um, Bree, will you take pictures for me? Thank you, sorry. Rosella is sick, our usual photographer, so um, we will pray for her as well. A sick Rosella is not a good Rosella. Um, 
So first we're going to do, let's do First Communion. So we have three who are receiving their First Communion this morning, um, and we are super excited. So, all right. Haley, would you come forward? And then we have Nicole and Georgie. Haley, Nicole, and Georgie. There we go. Would you guys come on up? We have some things for you. And we want to take your picture. Can we take your picture? Miss Haley, can you stand right here for me? And we'll put, how about we put Georgie in the, in the middle? Hey, Georgie, can we give you this? Awesome, perfect, and love, oops, sorry, sir, and Miss Nicole. All right, you stand right there, and Pastor Matt has crosses for you. Hey, Arlo. Can you be our helper? Awesome. All right, wonderful. All right, and we'll take a picture. They can just breathe. Thank you much. Oh, one more. Thank you, and we welcome you guys, and we learned that God loves everybody, and there's a place for each of us at the table, right? All right, you guys can go have a seat. All right, we have one more thing to do. Very exciting. All right. Now, this is where we recognize those who have been members for 50 years, and they received their 50-year pin. Those folks are, I will name all the names, and you can come forward. Uh, I'm not going to use her, Marty Appleby. Uh, last night, she was here, Teresa Savellos, Julie Fulton, Martin Huffer, Stephen Leatherman. No, I think it might just be you, my friend. Dana Lichtenberger. Oh, I forgot. And Mr. Jack Scott. I forgot there's two of you. There you are, Miss Marty. Thank you. Right there. Yeah. May we congratulate them on their 50 years of being members? Thank you. Thank you. Would you stand next to Miss Marty? Can I get a quick picture? Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you guys for being here. Congratulations. There's one more recognition. Oh, one more recognition. On this day, 12 years ago, in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, Pastor Diane Day was ordained to the Ministry of Word and Sacrament. So we wanted to get you some flowers. Yeah. Okay. Thank so, you. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. There's a note from Bishop Gould, too. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I did not expect that. Thank you. Good job. Anytime. Well done. Well done. <laughs> All right. We'll continue with our prelude. Great. <laughs>
a few notes about our bulletin today because there's a couple mistakes. We just realized them this morning. For the hymn of the day, we're actually going to do the last song for the hymn of the day because children's choir is supposed to be singing, but they'll be in footprints, so a little rearranging there like that. We also, um, you might recognize Bobby. He, is, he came up from Norfolk. He was phone call number 15 to, for, for a supply organist this weekend. Um, graciously, I, and it wasn't even for him to come play. It was, please teach me how to use the fancy dandy uh, MIDI controller. And he said, why don't I just come and play and make it a little easier for you. So thank you for coming in, Bobby, and for filling for us this week. Uh, babies do a couple weeks? Three weeks. Three weeks, so... Uh, for that as well. And there was one other mistake in the bulletin, I think, but I can't remember it, so we'll go with it. Please rise for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us sing our opening hymn, 504, 504. Thank you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Glory God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, filled with all truth and peace, where it is corrupt, purify it, where it is an error, direct it, where in anything it is amiss, reform it, where it is right, strengthen it, where it is in need, provide for it, where it is divided, unite it. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You all may be seated for lessons. And we can, if you are a little person and would love to hang out with Diana, it is time to go to Footprints. first reading this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will like, not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me. The least of these to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our psalm today comes from Psalm 46 and we'll read responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts Be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I want to start out by, I want you to think about a relationship in your life that is your closest relationship, the person that you are closest to, okay? This might be the person that when something goes wrong, or you're really upset, you call them first. They may be the person that when something goes right and you're really excited about something, you call them first. They're the person that uh, when you want to try something new, you say, hey, will you go with me or will you hold me accountable to this thing? They're the person that you can just be yourself around. You can be silly, you can be totally mad, you can be just ecstatic, and you can just be who you are. When we're in that kind of relationship, when we're with that person, and maybe it's persons, if it's persons, I'm so happy for you. Don't you feel free? 
don't you feel like you can just be who you are and you never have to worry whether they're going to love you or not, whether you're going to like really, really upset them, that they're still going to love you anyway? Aren't those really good relationships to have? It's, it's almost like, I don't know for you, but when I think of that relationship for me, I can just go, <sighs> because it is really tiring being a human, isn't it? It's really tiring to encounter another person and, and think about how they perceive you. And it's really tiring to think about how you're supposed to act when you enter a new situation and do a new different thing, right? You're gauging the room. You're, you're gauging the person you're talking to. You're watching people. It's exhausting if you're an introvert. If you're an extrovert, you're all over it. It's feeding you. You are good to go. Our relationships are beautiful. It's what we're created to be a part of. We're created to be in relationship with one another. But that's not always easy. It's hard because even within our relationships, we have those ones that are closest to us that we know will love us no matter what. But there's also those relationships where that's not the case that we know we have to think a little bit harder about how we act and interact with one another. We don't feel as free with one another. And then, sometimes, we mess up. Sometimes we say wrong things. Sometimes we intentionally say wrong things and hurt one another. Sometimes we don't think about the other people in the room when we are all riled up and we just say what comes out of our mouth or do what we do, and it hurts other people. And we become slaves to what makes ourselves comfortable and our own thoughts and our own selves. What makes us feel comfortable and not a concern for anybody else. That's exhausting to deal with letting people down. It's not fun to let people down. It's not fun to hurt other people. And if someone does think it's fun, there's some sad, sad things that gone on in their past, right? Because hurt people hurt people. What does this have to do with the gospel? We hear about the relationship that truly, truly and has always, from the very beginning, made us free. Jesus says, if you continue, actually, Greek word, better translation, if you abide, if you live, move, have your being, in my word, in this relationship we have together, if you exist in that, you will know the truth. You will know love and God's unconditional love and gift of life. And you will be free. Free to be who I created you to be. Free to enjoy life. Free to share it with others. The problem is the folks in the text, and us too, are getting wrapped up in the things that don't make them free. The identities that we put on ourselves, that other people put on us, we think those are the number one. But the number one identity and relationship where we can be ourselves, where we can just go, is our relationship with God in our relationship with Jesus Christ. The gift of the Reformation is the reminder of this relationship, that it is the relationship that comes first. It is above all things. We could lose all the beautiful things that make our worship, that make us with our identities, that the world thinks none of that matters as much 
as the one we have with God. And that relationship is also the one that helps foster love and community in all our other relationships. We're reminded today that that relationship matters. When that relationship matters and we turn to that relationship, all other relationships will be better. All those things that keep us from being who God created us to be don't have the final say. When we mess up, when we screw up, there is forgiveness and love. Today, we remember that, and we hold that goodness so that we can be free. We can be free to remember love and forgiveness, and we can be free to share that before we share anything else because that gives life and life in abundance. May we share it and may we know it. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right, so again, sorry for our confusion. We are going to be singing now hymn number 654. 654, and I invite you to stand as you're able. Six, five, four.
In response to the word of God, let's confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in your worship bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of Inspired by God's word in Jesus Christ, let us pray for the church, for God's world, and for God's whole creation. Let us pray. Lord of all, we give thanks for your whole church throughout the world. Encourage unity between denominations so that those who follow Christ may share worship and mission opportunities together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God, as the dying leaves display their beauty, we are reminded that the cycle of life includes both life and death. Instill in your people a need to preserve trees, animals, and waterways that are threatened by mismanagement and lack of care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for all those who cry out for relief from oppression. May the hearts of those in power be changed so that peace can become the norm of life for their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, be with all who are sick, suffering, or grieving in our own community and beyond. Especially this day, we pray for the families of Pastor Ron, Bill Lance, and Denison Plumbing, Grace, Susie, Peggy, Ruth Ann, Lucretia, all those who are on our prayer list and all those whom we name before you now, either aloud or in our hearts. Surround them with the promise of your love, comfort, and grace that never ends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Guide, on this Reformation Sunday, continue to challenge this congregation to be ever reforming in our ministries and outreach efforts. Inspire creative ideas among us so that the word of God remains at the heart of our ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, through Christ's resurrection, you assure us that though our lives be taken away, death cannot win the day. May the truth of your saving grace through faith in Jesus Christ sustain our hope for everlasting life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace that you so freely give us through faith in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Who share a sign of God's peace with your brothers and sisters in Christ.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every good gift of your creation. Through these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the Savior came death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us a way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcasts, the spies, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering there for his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise to your prophets and martyrs of every age and rejoice in the hope of the resurrection we may live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that our Lord is good. Congregation may be seated. A word about communion today, especially if you're a visitor for the first time. Welcome. Our, um, all baptized Christians are welcome to receive and partake in, the, in communion this day. You'll come down the center aisle as directed by the ushers, receive the bread from the communion assistant, and then uh, grab a cup from the trays and then receive the wine from Pastor Diana or myself. And you can return to the side aisles and drop your cup off in the baskets in the windowsill. If uh, you need communion brought to you, don't worry, we can come. If you feel like you're going to faint, sit, we'll come to you. Um, there's a reason I'm not a doctor and I'm a pastor, so uh, I don't do blood. So... Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. Let us sing together all the Agnew Day. Lord Christ should for you. Lord Christ should for you.
Please rise as you are able. The by and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with your spirit at this table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Reminder, there is lunch. If you didn't bring anything, don't worry. 5,000 people, miracle happens every time we do this. So don't worry. Come downstairs. Um, it takes us usually like an hour to get down there. So why don't we say a word of prayer and then you all can start eating. And if they look at you like, you're, like where are the pastors at, you can't start eating, tell them I said it's okay, all right? Let us pray. You guys, if it's all look to our Lord as you give us your food in due season, open your hands, you satisfy our ever-living need. Bless us, O Lord, in needs I gifts which you're about to receive in thy bountiful goodness. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. So please do go downstairs uh, and enjoy a nice lunch. Uh, will you receive the benediction? Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. So like we said, our hymn, our, um, you all are going to help sing our, with our children's choir today. The hymn is 866. It is, We Are Marching in the Light of God. The, the Lutheran Church, when we think about the Reformation, we usually think about Germany. We think of mighty fortresses are God. We think of nice German chorales that no one can sing anymore. But the Reformation is continuing today. And in one of the places that it's, the Lutheran Church is growing the fastest is in places like Tanzania, where Swahili is spoken. This is, we are marching in the light of God is, is I'm not going to say, but it's, um, it is a song that they sing. We're going to sing the English verse. Uh, the kids are going to sing it one time through, and then you're going to join in on verse two. So, and it's really easy. It's we are marching in the light of God. Repeat it four times. And then it goes, we are dancing, praying, singing. So our children's choir, you guys want to come up? Let's see. There's only a few of them today. Say, say. Any other kids want to come up and sing? I, I mean, they, I don't think they would mind the help. All right, you guys ready? Where's Zach? Zach! Nope. Backed out? All right. You guys ready? Nice and loud. Remember, we're going to sing the first verse, and then they're going to come in. All right, Zach, thank you, buddy. All right, ready? We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching. We are marching. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching. Worship has ended, now the service begins. 
As we go out into the world, let us remember our mission. As a people of God, we share Christ's love, grow in faith, and serve others. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.